Hello everyone, this is Pal Ponder on Weather. In this update, we're going to be talking about multiple storm systems with a snowstorm, a snow cane, and an arctic blast as we look to have a wild week of weather for the next 7 to 10 days. So if you're new to the channel, click the subscribe button and the notification bell to get all my daily updates to keep you ahead of the storm. So let's get right to it. Uh, this is Monday, October the 4th update. And what we're looking at here is the overall jet stream. So you can kind of get a full depiction of what's happening. You start to see these little buckles. Whenever you have these little buckle, buckles in the uh, jet stream, it brings down some of that colder air. And then underneath this, this could have some instability and some heavier rains. And you can definitely see the buckling starting to take shape into the southeast as we've got some cooler shots coming in off, off the west. If we take a look at the overall 500 millibar pattern, you can definitely see what's happening. We've got this developing trough that's setting up over the southeast. We've got a ridge of high pressure over the top, bringing well above average temperatures for that region. As we've got multiple troughs coming down off the west coast, and these will only intensify as we go deeper into the week, and especially in the next week, bringing heavier rains, colder air, and a snowstorm. So let's take a look at why this is all happening. If we take a look way out here into the Bering Sea off uh, off uh, near Alaska, there's uh, there's the west coast here. This is actually the remnants of Super Typhoon Mundal. Now this has actually pulled up into the Bering Sea. We had a lot of heavy snow in Alaska. Some places had up to 22 inches of snow over the weekend, and that system is pulling in into that region. Now, once it pulls in, it's going to be able to drag down some of that colder air and actually funnel it back into the West Coast. So as it does that, it's going to send multiple troughs down, sending some heavier rains along the west, west, Western regions, and then eventually some very cold air and if not some snow going to be flying by the time we get into late next late this week into early next week. So, man, this is we got a lot to talk about. Let's take a look at the overall vorticity index and how this is all going to play out. Here's the setup this morning. You can see this developing uh, vorticity underneath. That's what's bringing the flooding rains into the southeast. We've got spokes of energy off here off the west coast. That's actually going to bring some welcome rain into parts of California as we have multiple vorticities dropping down from Alaska and off the Bering Sea. And like I mentioned, these will only just kind of intensify as we go deeper into the week and especially in the next week. So if we take a look at the overall surface map as far as the hazards go today, underneath that trough and that vorticity, yeah, we've got flood watches into parts of uh, Alabama today as the heavier rains will be setting up over the southeast and spreading some very heavy rain over, uh, over an extended period of time. We look at the overall uh, expanded view as far as the, uh, the rainfall for today on Monday here, we can definitely see we've got multi-inch rains uh, setting up in parts of uh, Mississippi here and especially in Alabama that will filter into Georgia and the Carolina regions as we have another system coming up here into the Northeast, spreading some heavier rains into upstate New York, getting to Vermont, New Hampshire, uh, Massachusetts, Connecticut, down here near a Boston area is going to be get some heavier rains as welcome rains underneath that other trough out here in South uh, Southern uh, California is going to bring some uh, welcome rains for that region as well as Arizona today. So if we take a look at tomorrow, that just expands and kind of deepens and still dumps some flooding rains over the Southeast regions. This, this developing of vorticity will just kind of move over into the Four Corners regions, dumping some heavier rains into Arizona, into New Mexico, parts of Colorado, as well as Utah, as we have yet another trough digging in off the west coast along the coastline there into Seattle, say Portland area is going to be picking up some, some, some rains moving back in that region as we go through the day on a Tuesday. So as we transition to Wednesday, we still have that vorticity. Now that just moves just a little bit further off to the north. Now the heavier rains will spread into northern Georgia by then, into South Carolina, into uh, North Carolina, as well as 
parts of Tennessee and Kentucky. This will eventually filter into Virginia and West Virginia as well, and also spread into uh, some some of the rain spread into Missouri and to Illinois as as well as uh, Indiana and Ohio as this will continue uh, lifting up a little bit further off into the Northeast. And by the time we get into Thursday, here's the overall jet stream now. So we see multiple buckles in the jet stream. And every time this buckles, it'll bring down some colder air and that'll be reaching the surface. But underneath that, we've got some instability uh, to work with, uh, with some welcome rains moving back in into uh, the West Coast. There's the overall 500 millibar pattern by the time we get into that Thursday time frame, October the 7th. There's that other vorticity underneath that. That's going to be moving further off into the northeast. We still got the ridge of high pressure just locked in place, bringing those well above average anomalies for parts of the Dakotas and Minnesota, Wisconsin, and the Michigan here. As yet, we have another trough that's going to be digging down here off the west coast then in spokes and spokes of energy and cooler air and that colder air will just get intensified colder as we go deeper into the week and there's your setup for thursday as far as the rain goes that same system will move a little bit further off into uh, the ohio valley and spread into the carolinas we've got more sporadic rain for california nevada and to parts of uh, utah and as well as the uh, idaho here getting into montana by the time we get into that thursday uh, time frame and as we go into uh, Friday there's the overall setup now so as we see yet another spoke of a colder air getting its act together moving down here from uh, the Bering Strait and parts of Alaska here bringing down that colder air off the west coast the ridge stays locked and loaded over uh, the northern interior states as this will be the active player as we go deeper into the weekend and especially uh, next week but on the flip side of everything remember Sam Sam is still out here and it's actually a bona fide 105 mile per hour hurricane still I mean this is 40 degrees north all right I mean this is well north we've been dealing with Sam since September the 18th and check out where Sam is going now this is Iceland and now this is Greenland so remember Larry that actually brought the major blizzard into Greenland area with like five feet of snow. We've got Sam kind of doing the same thing. It's going to be coming across and this is by Friday into Saturday. It's going to dump some heavier snows, probably not the five feet that we got from Larry, but we're still going to be getting some heavier snows moving back in with some, some higher winds and some blizzard like conditions moving back into Greenland. From the leftovers, what will be Sam, we can finally say goodbye then. We've been dealing with Sam since like September the 18th. So this has been a, an incredible storm lasting for an extended period of time. And now it's all going to end in Greenland with some heavier snows moving back into that region. And now as we expand the view, there's the cold air. So once we get past that Thursday, Friday time frame, that cold air really starts to deepen. Here's your graph down below. The further deeper the blue, that's your more uh, further well below average uh, temperatures. We're talking anywhere from 20 to 30 degrees, probably below average by then. So for much of the West Coast is going to be well below average. And it's just the opposite. It's just the total extreme of, of, of differences between the central and eastern part of those 15, 20, if not 25 and 30 degrees at times above average temperatures. So there's gonna be a major difference depending on where you live. But yeah, underneath those troughs, we got multiple rounds of above average rains moving in off the West Coast and that will just filter in. And by then, a lot of this will be in the form of snow uh, underneath that. So all the heavier rains we'll, we're dealing with for the next six days into the Southeast will kind of subside a little bit once we get into that six to 10 day period so once we move into that period all the action looks to be off the west coast with that really deepening uh trough digging in off the west coast bringing in that very cold air the definitely the coldest air of the season if not an arctic blast moving into that region and the jet stream really starts to buckle and i showed you the extremes and temperatures and that's when we can really start to have those clashing temperatures and my october is kind of known for big swings and big volatility and by the time we get into the next week man it's going to be really showing its true colors and it's we're going to have a wild week of weather on tap 
uh, with some probably a lot of severe weather going to be breaking out as well as snowstorms and well above average temperatures, well below average temperatures. So it's going to be a wild week of weather. No, no question at that. Uh, here's the overall jet stream by the time we get into that October 12th time frame. Look at the buckle now. The buckle means, man, it's bringing down all that colder air. And underneath that, we got a lot of instability and a lot of clash in the upper levels. And that one, we could set the stage for probably some uh, severe weather outbreaks into the plains. And But ahead of that, we're going to be dealing with snowstorms. <laughs> so here's the temperature anomalies by the time we get into that 12th and 13th time frame with that huge clash in temperatures of 25 30 degrees below average and then just the co complete opposite on the flip side so man look at that i mean that's the extremes and once you have that clash and all you have to have some some instability in the upper levels we're going to be dealing with some severe weather underneath that and but to the north we also have that snow to be contend with and it's probably going to be some heavier snow at that so that's going to be moving in uh to nevada getting into utah portions of idaho into wyoming especially into montana by the time we get into that next tuesday time frame october the 12th and it really starts to amplify by the 13th and look at that at 986 low pressure that's going to be a bona fide snowstorm no question about it uh, especially in the higher elevations into uh, parts of Wyoming as eventually getting into uh, Colorado as we got more snow coming up with that really cold air filtering in off, off the west coast. If we take a look at some of the snow totals, even the models are kind of spitting out at this uh, early stage. I mean, yeah, this is going to be a bona fide snowstorm. There's no question. So, I mean, they're already spitting out isolated amounts of over two feet. And, and it's, these are high elevation events. So, yeah, definitely into Wyoming. Some of these areas are going to be picking up easily six, eight, ten inches, no question. If not isolated amounts, a lot more than that. So that's going to be on the table as we get into uh, early next week. And all that snow will just filter down into uh, portions of uh, Colorado. It's probably going to be at a higher elevation event, probably not much in, in Denver at this time. But definitely off here to the, into the higher elevations, north of Durango, uh, into Steam, uh, Steamboat Springs here. Yeah, easily, you know, six to eight, if not double digit amounts would be no question uh, whatsoever with all that colder air filtering in. We got all that above average precipitation to work with as well. So there's definitely a wild week of weather. And of course, to the right side of that, we're going to have to be probably dealing with some severe weather uh, with that clash in temperature, especially in the plains, getting into Kansas and Oklahoma, probably filtering down into Texas by the time we get into that Tuesday, Wednesday time frame of next week. So it's going to be definitely an active pattern, but for the next uh, 10 days, there's the rain prospects underneath. We've got all that rain moving back into the Pacific Northwest with multi-inch rains. The drought's going to be eaten away uh, out there. Welcome rains into California, uh, Nevada. As we get into Idaho, again, multi-inch rains, and a lot of this is going to form into uh, snow here. Getting into Utah, into Arizona, portions of New Mexico, into Colorado, uh, even into uh, parts of the Dakotas, getting in some of those heavier rains. This is not going to be snow. It's all it's all going to be rain because you're going to be well, well, too, too warm. Uh, but underneath that, we dry out in Texas for much of the week. And then some of these rains are picking up on that Tuesday, Wednesday time frame as that system will start coming in. But for this week, we have to deal with those multi-inch rains and flooding rains into parts of the southeast, uh, especially into uh, Alabama here, into Georgia, going into the Carolinas with multi-inch rain. Some of these areas could pick up easily six to eight inches, if not double digits in spots. So flooding is a huge concern uh, for this region uh, as we go into uh, for, for the week. And there's the snow. I mean, there's the there's the lift from uh sam and we've got all the heavier snow bringing coming back there's greenland with those multi-feet snows coming back in that region there's all the snow in alaska with that colder air filtering down from canada going to bring all the heavier snows off the west coast here and especially as you go into montana getting into wyoming into colorado and in portions of uh, utah next week with the bona fide snowstorms definitely on the table as we get into that Tuesday, Wednesday time frame of next week. So I appreciate you guys uh, watching. Do like this video. Definitely leave your comments below. And don't forget, 
to subscribe to my channel to catch the latest update where I protect you before and after the storm.